Well, welcome to the 21 Club. I assume you're just gonna be doing, you're gonna be fitting in quite well with the scenery here. If you are, of course, a fabulously wealthy, artistic, intellectual, literary sort of person, is that kind of something that defines you? No? Well, there's a place for everyone, and I guess this Stoke Club can, or the 21 Club rather, can fit you right in. Can you afford it? Alrighty then. Can I get you a drink? Excellent, of course, because it might be the prohibition, but that doesn't matter here. In these sort of cafe society sort of clubs, it doesn't matter. What matters is, are you here? Are you present? Are you cool? Are you lively? And if you are, then you're just the bee's knees. Now, there we go. I can tell that you came without makeup though. It's as plain as a siren. Here's your drink. Let me just sit you right there. So. You have plans for tonight? You're gonna be hitting this club and then you're gonna be hitting up another next club. Okay, so you're just gonna basically be going back. Clubbing. I just coined a new word. What's this? You see, I've been working on an invention of mine. You see, this is called a amplifier. And you know why I called it an amplifier? Because it takes vocal recordings and it makes it super loud. Louder than it would be. So, I called it an amplifier or a microphone. Microphones already exist. Well, slap me sideways. I am truly depressed. Now, nonetheless, nonetheless, this is our tool of my own invention. These are connected. These, I call these the, uh, the uh, earpieces. That's what I call them, earpieces. Nonetheless, no more talk about this. No, you might think I'm worrying about this anymore. No, no, no. That's enough talk. So, tell me, what other clubs are you planning on hitting in New York City? This club is, uh, one of the very many that are around here, scattered around for the Cafe Society of Leap. To be visiting, for example, the likes of Zaza Gabor, Gloria Vanderbilt, Ernest Hemingway. So you tell me, what other towns are you planning on visiting tonight? The Stork Club, the 21 Club, the Morocco Club. Morocco Club, so very exotic. None of them. Oh, pray tell then, which one are you going to be hitting then? You're going to be visiting Paris tonight. Well, aren't you the very ambitious type? Traveling wanderlust, isn't that what I hear they're calling it nowadays? That is something that I do at my and someone, that ambition. Now, do you know what club you're going to be visiting over there yet? No? Well, that is the excitement of it. Just wandering willy-nilly, going from place to place, just kind of, you know, scouring the earth, just making sure that you get the full dose of every gallon that has life has to offer to you. I must commend your work for that reason but you can't go to paris looking like this because i mean granted this is new york city and you know you can look the way you want to look in new york city because we don't really care here to be honest we say we care but in reality we don't i mean look at me i'm wearing my little peepers right now so i mean like who i wouldn't dare wear my little peepers in paris so if you're planning on going to paris you're gonna be definitely in a look to go along with it you are in luck though I myself am a makeup artist slash seamstress. It is something that I do in my downtime. I am here accompanied by some of these celebrities that I, you know, join in case they have any sort of wardrobe malfunction. I'm here to kind of just sew it up. All tight, all tight, all tight. Fix any complications and then redo their makeup. Touch it all up. So that way they know that they are not going to be looking like a total mess. Especially with the whole popularity of photojournalism coming up. That is my speciality. So, I'll do you the favor just because you look like a nice person, a nice, decent person. I'm registering some very good vibes from you, some very conducive, positive vibes. So, because of this, I will be doing your makeup for you. So, let me just put this right here. Put this right here, and then I'll just collect this. Now, let me just take a 
sip. Delicious. Never mind the prohibition. There's nothing that's ever gonna stop me from drinking. So let's start cracking up on your look. Especially since in uh, Paris. I do hear that um they have a lot of artists there that like sketching people that just come and sit down in their cafes. So if you're gonna get your portrait done, might as well be looking fabulous while you get it done. So and let's get to cracking and make sure that my work is worth getting drawn over so let's begin let's begin i think what i'm going to be starting with is of course the eyes i'll start from top to bottom do you ever tweeze your eyebrows i feel like you should just because you know that whole line across the top of your eyes is in fashion and right now your eyebrows are looking a little bit bushy just a little bit bushy just like whoosh, 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 whoosh. so have you ever thought about tweezing them no well i guess just keep them around for a little bit more. Sometimes whenever you tweeze them, you know, the eyebrows end up disappearing completely and, you know, no one really likes that look either, so I understand. Although by the point, you know, usually most people just kind of draw them in, but it is quite a hassle and it would be nice to have, you know, your natural eyebrows, so. Let us begin with the whole makeup process, so I'm going to be giving a bit of eye shadow. It's sort of like femme fatale look that has been popularized by Miss Clara Bow. Yes, the girl from It Girl. The original It Girl. The only It Girl. Although I do predict that there's going to be plenty more in the future. It Girls are considered objects. Mannequins that clothes are put on. And that is going to be uh, fluctuating with the times. So, let me just put on like a little bit of a dark one and just choose. Yes, that would be fabulous. Okay. Just choose. I do apologize for your ears. Just choose this dark one right here. Perfect. Please close your eyes a little bit more. Thank you. I'm having a bit of a hard time getting into those creases right there. But I think they should be good now. Definitely, definitely. So you keep bouncing from New York to Paris. What a jet setting lifestyle you live. I do praise you. Experience traveling now for the other eye right there, so I'm just gonna start filling that in as well. In fact, let me just get a little bit more of this eyeshadow. We are using it in a very splendid way. We are showering you with the eyeshadow. Your family do. You know, usually there's the nouveau riche and the old money. People respect old money more than nouveau riche, but to be honest, money is money, and having either is enough to have an affluent lifestyle. Nouveau riche. What exactly were you doing then? What got you to the nouveau riche? Architecture. That is a booming industry at the moment. Bricklaying and making, you know, buildings and whatnot. There definitely is a demand for it. Nothing to be just a little bit right there. Just keep. There we go. 
I'm just a little bit about that. Just how I can get some detail on this over here. There we go. Looking amazing. Now for a bit of you. we're going to want to do is simply pull the eyeliner so that way it's just like close your eyes please just close your eyes just close your eyes thank you very much so I'm just going to pull it along just make sure that it's just right there can you hear that? sort of like sad up here settled in that regard. Now what we're going to be doing moving on down your face. So we started from your eyes and now we're going down to your cheeks. So let me just open up my palette of colors right here. And then back my brush. We're going to rouge up your cheeks a little bit. Give you that flushed look. That innocent look. Blood gush into the cheeks. There we go. Okay. Now. now I'm just gonna go in with the cheeks right here. Make sure I don't really get the apples of your cheeks. Really line them up so that way they're the ones that the most blushing. I got sort of brushing, blushing brush. Especially with all of the uh, more, um, more, yes. All the more that you find in France, such an amorous city, known for romance. You're gonna wanna look very dolled up. For your other cheek. Let me just get a little bit more of that blush on my brush. Blush on that brush. Brush on that blush. Blush on that brush. Blush on that brush. That right. And I'm just gonna get started on this one now. So let me just look at my people so that way I can better see what's going on. I try to avoid it sometimes, but like I know that like when it comes to like my makeup skills, it's usually improved by me using my little peepers. If I try not to look through them, I end up making a bit of a mistake, a little boo-boo. But let me just get the apple of your cheek. There we go. Perfectly beautiful, perfectly fabulous to be honest. The Parisians are just gonna be really writhing with anger, writhing with red, or with envy. That is the symptom or side effect of my work. That is why so many celebrities crave to find and work with me, but I am very exclusive. Very exclusive. I just do you the favor because you do seem like someone that is a different character from the bunch. So there we go. There's your blush. Now, so I'm gonna need you to pucker up. Mm -hmm. Pucker up just like this. Mm. The trick to this lipstick's trick this lipstick is to make sure you get that little pocket look, a very small sort of look. I'm gonna be using it too. Some people use a little bit of like a paint, like a paintbrush, and then just kind of get it from like a liquid lipstick. I'd much rather use just a stick. It's perfectly fine using it this way. And uh, I'm just gonna be needing it to pucker up a little bit more, sweetie. Mm -hmm. Like this. Excellent. So, 
I just want to get you that teensy weensy mouth. Not a color in the others right here, but it's kind of highlighting your cupid bow and your bottom lip. Mm -hmm. There we go. There we go. And then your bottom lip. Top up again. And then bottom. I go like this. You're looking fantastic. Let me just see the full picture once again, just to make sure that everything is settled. Just give you a little pinch on the cheek so that way it gets them really colored up. Kind of skirt off some of the eyeshadow and some of the eyeliner, make sure that it's all nice and close. Close your eyes, sweetie. I'm just gonna brush off the excess eyeshadow. down a bit of the excess lipstick as well that's like mine all over the place okay thank you looking completely lovely sweetheart just completely in place now let me put back my things if you end up needing my services again you can always find me lounging about in my usual spots usually on my own just kind of perusing the scene looking at you know any new looks that i could possibly get inspiration from usually that's not the case the crowd here usually follows each other in trend but i could get inspired you never know so i'll be usually lounging about so if you decide that you're going to be needing a little bit of a touch up anytime soon then please don't for, don't hesitate to come and ask me for help Otherwise, I hope your night goes lovely and that your time in Paris or Paris or Paris ends up being lovely and that you end up being an artist. Well, until later, if later comes. Bye-bye. No, 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 no. This seat is not taken. You can, you can sit down if you want. Are you on your own? Yeah? You look quite impoverished. Uh, no offense. Let me guess. You just arrived in Paris from Gare du Nord and you have nowhere to go to but this address, Café du Dôme, because some crazy artistic friend told you that everything in Paris was happening in the Café du Dôme, correct? I knew it. Well, your friend wasn't wrong. It is true that everything is happening in the, in the Café du Dôme. All the intellectuals, all the artists, the philosophers, the painters, everyone is um, acquainted and everyone work and, you know, hang out in this café together, you know, it's it's just the place to be. But what do you have in that uh, poor canvas bag of yours? Two shirts and one blanket. Oh well, that is ingenious. I guess that you don't need much more in Paris to survive as long as you have great friends. And I'm sure you will have great friends soon. But do you have a place to stay? 
2008 until you find a more permanent solution. No? Well, in that case, let me give you the address of a great friend of mine, Rudolf Levy. He knows everywhere and everyone and everything, so he will be able to find you some cheap hotel room to stay in until you can find a more permanent solution, if you know what I mean. Yeah. yeah. There you go. Oh. Me? Oh, I'm... No, I'm just... You know, I doodle, I scribble, I, I scribble on, on napkins. I like to draw people while they are eating. What about you? You are poets. How interesting. Most of the time people are painters or writers. I, I don't see many poets around here, so it's a, it's quite a refreshing um, thing that you 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 came here. It's it's nice. Um, you know what? Why don't I sketch you while you're eating? But of course, that is my one condition. I only draw people when they are eating. I can only draw them if they are eating. If they are not eating, I don't draw them. So you will have to order something. Yeah, all of my friends are painters as well. But we only have one role here uh, at uh, Le Café du Dôme. We don't speak of our own work. We... Or I guess unless if it's to criticize it. But we like to talk about what we went through, what we saw, what we admired, the work of other people, not our own work. I mean, except from Picasso and Braque, who, I mean, they love to talk about their own work and what they are in the process of making. They, they just love talking about themselves. They, they're full of themselves, if you want my opinion. But yeah, you know, Picasso and Braque, they, these are just, you know, always glued together. <laughs> no, it's funny because glue glue in French is a collage and, uh, you know, that's um, that's kind of their thing of the moment, collage. They, they're trying to invent some kind of new movement. They, they stick, they glue stuff together and they call that modern art. <laughs> but anyway, enough about this too. Here at Café du Dôme, we do not speak of our own creations we speak of others um, that's what I wanted to tell you but anyway let's get you something to eat because you look completely famished um, here you can buy a meal for less than whatever you have on you less than you know one coin mm, what could you have um, mm, Oh, it's just that you look like you haven't been eating for um, for a few days. <laughs> you know, you look like you haven't been eating for three or four days because you've been working relentlessly on that one art piece. And so because of that, you can't afford a decent meal. But not to worry because, of course, you probably have a rich family who low-key supports you financially while you're on this artistic journey that cannot possibly be understood by them, but they let you have this artistic journey because it's better than seeing you ruining the family's fortune by playing with the shares by day or, you know, gambling by night. I know it all, I know it. I've been here a long time, my dear. So what will you have for supper? They make here an exquisite saucisse de Toulouse and the puree is not bad either. Let me order it for you. Excusez-moi, oui. Une saucisse de Toulouse et une purée, s'il vous plaît. Merci. Ok. Oh, don't mind me at all. You have to uh, eat completely naturally. As if um, nothing was going on. As if I I wasn't there. I'm, I'm not there. It's excellent training for me. How do you like the food? Oh, 
Can you try not to chew so loudly? I mean, I don't mind that your face is in motion, but um, I do need to concentrate a little bit, and I can't do so if all I can hear is the, the sausage being squashed between your molars and lateral incisors. You have quite prominent incisors, by the way. Very, very interesting. Mm. This will be very helpful. I want people to be able to recognize you when they see my drawing, you know? I want them to be... Mais, mais c'est bien sûr, Pardi. C'est, it's, it's good old... Oh. I'm sorry, I actually forgot to ask you what your name was. Oh, well, I guess it doesn't matter. C'est pas grave. I'll end up knowing it. If you become famous. Which you will, like all of us. Or almost. See here, we are all united by our love for Paris. We come here and sketch or write until the sun is down and the candlelight are burning our eyes. We live to create. Oh no, 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 none of us actually need to sell our paintings or work. Um, no, I mean, we. I mean, I believe we all come from families who are quite um, supportive in a financial way, if you know what I mean. Uh, so we don't actually live uh, off our art, or we don't, you know, imagine if we had to live of it, from it. Sorry, my English is not good. I mean, imagine. Oh, no, no, no. Just the... It's... It's just the thought, the, the thought of having to earn money that is um, so so refreshing, so new, so so comical, so so different, so petit peuple, so so working class, so so bourgeois, so so middle class. It's it's not us. It's not us. No, no. we we do art for the art. We do the art for free, you know. Mm. Also, sometimes I do wish that uh, art was an issue or a motivation for some of us because, you know, I think it's uh, my friend Marcel Duchamp who likes to say that if a man lived in the heart of the African desert, um, uh, if a man lived there and every day he was creating a painting that was more beautiful than any painting that had ever existed in the world, but if no one ever saw the painting or knew about it, then it would just be like if the man didn't exist, you know? You know? I mean, like, because the artist needs to be known and seen to exist. Otherwise, if you just do paintings in your room and no one ever sees them, then you're not an artist, you're nothing. Why do you look so bored? You look so... Fatigued, fatigué. Are you? Well, are you having some kind of uh, existentialist crisis? Because if that, in that case, you came to the wrong table because Jean-Paul Sartre and Simone de Beauvoir are sitting just there, just there. And, you know, you can join them if you want. But, um, yeah, I mean... I get it, being a model is not the most interesting act activity, interesting activity that um, one can do, but I don't know, I mean, you don't have to look so depressed, you know? Like, I know it's hard to arrive in a new city, in a new country, you probably don't speak the language yet, but you'll get used to it, and it's fine, we all, I mean, we can all just express our art, we can express ourselves and being amongst friends and, you know, just celebrate art all day, all night. That's, that's the life, that's Paris, that's just the way it is, that's c'est la vie, you know? Well, 
I must admit, I'm not the funniest. You would have spent a better time had you chosen Ernest table. Ernest Hemingway. He's sitting over there, writing like a maniac. Look at him. No, no, not now, not now. He's looking, not now. Now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know he doesn't look like it right now, but don't be fooled, don't be fooled. He might look serious right now, but he actually quite a bit of a comic man. He claims to be a part-time humorist. He has a very persistent reliance on humor. You should read his latest, um, The Sun Also Rises. I, just, I think he finished the first draft last week or so. Yeah, he... Um, oh yeah, yeah, he will let you read it if you tell him that you're interested, that you, wanna, that you want to look at it, that you want to, you know, he will let you read his, his novel. And, you know, he wanted to originally call it a little treatise on promiscuity, including a few jokes. Oh, he's committed to humor, you'll see. Mm, he's, he's quite funny, but we can, we can have dinner with him later if you want. I mean, you, all, you are already having dinner, but usually here in Paris, we usually eat around 11, 11, 10, 11 o'clock maybe. Yeah, wait, this, yeah. Can you hold your fork right there? Perfect. Yeah. Um. Oh, don't move. I, I just like your fork like this. Yeah. It, the, the movement is very graceful. Just, just hold it like this. Like you're about, you're about to take a bite of that sausage, but you're not. You're not. You are not taking a bite. You're just about to take a. Yes. Okay. Just stay like that. Okay. You must hold it until I finish the drawing. I know it's hard, but just hold it that way. Just rid yourself of the idea of finishing that sausage. But move your mouse, move your mouse slowly, still, as if you were chewing the sausage. Oh, I know your mouse is empty, but as if you were chewing an invisible an invisible sausage, but delicious sausage, like this. Yeah, perfect, très bien. You are masticating with a lot of conviction. I think you could think of changing career and becoming an actor. Yes. You know, if it doesn't work out selling poems, you can always, you know, become a theater actor or something. They're quite big these days, you know. Hmm, how am I going to call this piece? Maybe hmm, the man masticating his impalpable sausage. How is this? Hmm. Maybe a little bit weird, I don't know. You like it? I guess it's a little bit surrealist. Talking about surrealism, should I do it Magritte style? You know Magritte? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Belgian. Yeah, I can, you know, draw the sausage and then write, this is not a sausage under it. Well, of course, if I draw the sausage, then what I draw is not a sausage. This is not a sausage, you know? Um, I mean, try and eat it. You can't eat the sausage that I draw on here, it will taste like paper. You know, this is just the representation of the sausage. It's not the actual sausage. Um, you must consider the, the sausage as a concrete reality, not as a word which is abstract and arbitrary. It's, it's like um, you have to, to 
think that if I write this is a sausage, I'm lying to the public. I have to say this is not a sausage because this is just a representation of it. That's the whole speech of Magritte on, you know, surrealism. As surrealists see the world in a kind of a different way. They wonder about the essence of painting, of the of the action of the painter on the image. It's all very philosophical, not not quite understandable at times, I believe. But yeah, it's too complicated for you. Just keep on chewing on your imaginary food. Ah, bonjour. Oui, oui, j'attends des amis. Oui. On se voit tout à l'heure. OK. Don't worry about it. Ignore him. It's Vasily. Vasily Kandinsky. You know, these art theorists, they think they are so special. All he does is abstract work. We all told him that no one cared for abstraction just yet, but he won't listen. To be honest with you, I don't think he's all there. Oh, he's like way ahead of his time because abstract work, no chance. It's never gonna work. My drawing is simply amazing. You are going to adore it. There, it's done. It's complete. I'm gonna sign it. See, it's a it's a combination of protocubism, post-impressionism, and pointillism with a touch of surrealism. Mm, I call it mm, neo-pointed cubilism. It's my own movement. I'm I'm starting it. Hopefully, it will take off. Yeah, c'est un cadeau. It's a gift. You can keep it. I think you are really gonna like it here.